Now we are going to discuss about angle modulation. Now we are going to discuss about angle modulation. It is a type of modulation where angle of carrier is varied in accordance with baseband signal. Any message signal which is having low frequency is called baseband signal. Now, we have following advantages of uh, angle modulation over uh, amplitude modulation. And the advantages are noise reduction and interference reduction, which plays a major role in amplitude modulation. And here we have a disadvantage which is increased bandwidth which is not advantageous for the transmission, but practically angle modulation plays major role. And here in angle modulation, we have two types. One is frequency modulation and the other is phase modulation. And any angle modulated wave equation is S of t equal to AC cos theta I of t, where theta is angle. AC is amplitude of carrier. And here, Angle is nothing but a combination of frequency and phase. So theta equal to 2 pi fct plus phi, where fc is frequency and phi is phase. So if you if you get varied frequency by varying amplitude of message signal, you are going to have a frequency modulated wave. And similarly, if you if you get varied phase in accordance with amplitude of message signal, you are going to get phase modulation. And now we will now discuss about uh, frequency modulation first. In frequency modulation, we already know omega is angular velocity, which is equal to d by dt of theta of t, where theta is angular displacement. So omega equal to 2 pi into fi, which is equal to d by dt of theta of t. From this, we are going to get a relation between frequency and phase. So finally, theta i of t equal to 2 pi into fct plus 2 pi into kf integral m of t dt. This is the equation for frequency modulated wave where kf is frequency sensitivity which is measured in hertz per volt. And now we will discuss about phase modulation briefly. And in phase modulation, equation for phase modulated wave is S of t equal to AC into cos of 2 pi fct plus Kp into m of t, where m of t is message signal, where m of t is message signal, Kp is phase sensitivity, which is measured in radians per volt. So these are two types of modulations which come under angle modulation. One is frequency modulation, another is phase modulation. And now we'll have a difference with we have a difference between amplitude modulation and frequency modulation. In amplitude modulation, we have equal spacings between zero crossings. Zero crossing is nothing but change from positive axis to negative axis. This is called zero crossing. We have equal spacing in case of amplitude modulation, whereas in angle modulation, whether it may be FM or PM, we don't have equal spacing here between zero crossings. And now we'll discuss about the various types of modulation in terms of waveforms. Let it be a sinusoidal message signal. And when derivation is applied to this, if it is a sinusoidal signal, we are going to get here a cosine signal. This is derivative of m of t, which is nothing but message signal. And let us take a carrier, which is having very high frequency compared to message signal. And now you will get a message uh, amplitude modulated signal following the amplitude of message signal. So amplitude is envelope of this amplitude modulated signal is similar to the message signal applied. 
and it follows the frequency of carrier but the envelope is similar to the amplitude of a message signal. Similarly, in order to get frequency modulated wave, in frequency modulation, your frequency varies depending on message signal. Wherever you have maximum amplitude, there you are going to get maximum frequency, which implies minimum time period that indicates less bandwidth. So whenever you have a minimum amplitude, you will have maximum frequency here. Minimum frequency which indicates maximum bandwidth. Similarly, in order to get uh, phase modulation, it follows derivative of m of t. Wherever you have maximum amplitude, you are going to head, get maximum frequency. So, wherever you have maximum frequency in FM signal, you are going to have a minimum frequency in PM signal. This is PM. For an FM wave, theta i of t equal to 2 pi integral f i of t dt. But we have already discussed that in frequency modulation f i is f c plus k f into m of t where m of t is message signal. So let us take m of t equal to a m cos 2 pi f m t. So finally we will get an equation theta i of t equal to 2 pi into f c t plus 2 pi into delta f by 2 pi f m sin 2 pi f m t where delta f is equal to k f into a m where k f is frequency sensitivity as we have already discussed so delta f by f m becomes beta which is nothing but modulation index so finally we have theta i of t equal to 2 pi f c t plus beta sin 2 pi f m t. So finally we have a frequency modulated wave equation as s of t equal to a c into cos of 2 pi f c t plus beta sin 2 pi f m t. So this modulation index decides two types of frequency modulated waves. One is narrow band frequency modulation and other is wide band frequency modulation. In narrow band frequency modulation, beta should be less than 1, whereas in wide band frequency modulation, beta should be greater than 1. Now let us see the generation of narrow band frequency modulation. In narrow band frequency modulation, if you expand this equation, you are going to get Now, the frequency modulated wave equation is S of t equal to AC cos of 2 pi f c t plus beta sin 2 pi f m t. So, pipeline trigonometric equation, we are going to have S of t equal to AC into cos of 2 pi f c t cos of beta sin 2 pi f m t minus sin of 2 pi f c t sin of beta sin 2 pi f m t. Let us now consider a wide narrow band frequency modulation where beta is less than 1. When beta is less than 1, this cos of beta sin 2 pi f m t becomes 1 and similarly sin of beta sin 2 pi f m t becomes beta sin 2 pi f m t. So finally we have an equation S of t is equal to AC into cos of 2 pi f c t minus sin of 2 pi f c t into beta sin 2 pi f m t. This is equation for wide narrow band frequency modulated wave. So generation of this follows this above block diagram. Here, here AC cos 2 pi FCT is supplied by this. Here you are going to get AC cos 2 pi FCT which is nothing but carrier. This is product modulator and this is 90 degrees phase shifter. This is message signal 
then message signal is passed to an integrator if it is sine sodal signal you are going to get cosine signal and similarly if you apply message signal as a cosine signal you are going to get sine sodal signal so finally you are going to have cos of 2 pi fct here so this part you are going to get here when this is passed to 90 degree phase shifter you are going to have ac sin 2 pi fct here so ac sin 2 pi fct and in product modulator that is it might be a phase modulator here m of t after integration you are going to get here beta sin 2 pi fct sin of 2 pi fmt into ac so finally you are getting you are going to have an aroban frequency modulated wave which is nothing but ac into cos of 2 pi fct minus sin 2 pi fct into beta sin 2 pi fmt we have two disadvantages here one is you are going to have residual amplitude modulation and other is harmonic distortion so practically in order to overcome these two disadvantages it is theoretically experimental experimentally it's found that beta should be less than or equal to 0.3 if it is greater than 0.3 you are going to face these two troubles